Hello everybody, and welcome to a bit of a different video. Today we're playing with optics, and the camera's having focusing issues because, well, it's... This is actually the better camera. Not actually mine, I borrow it from somebody, but still. Uh, let's do this, actually. Yes, excellent. I just have a simple laser pointer here, which works questionably and my cats love playing with it, but they're not in here right now. And some lenses. But the important thing I have here that I'm gonna play with are what are known as beam splitters. Now this is a very tiny beam splitter that uh, I don't know if you can see like the line down the middle. Uh, maybe. Whatever. Uh, this is a cube beam splitter that I actually um, removed from a, an old PlayStation 3 and it still has a lot of the plastic on it. And I have other ones in here too that are of a different caliber. However, I want to be very careful not to scratch them. Did I scratch it? No, I didn't. Here's another one. It's more of a, a piece of glass. I have a smaller one right here that's kind of in this plastic and then I have two itty bitty ones this one and this one which is an oddly shaped one now these were all um, removed from the same PlayStation there's actually a lot of them in there and the reason why I was looking for these is because I need a beam splitter because I'm building an interferometer and I require a beam splitter. And now how a beam splitter works, see if I can actually function correctly, is you can kind of see it there. Um, when a beam travels, like a laser beam travels through a beam splitter, it usually breaks it up into two, into two beams. Now this is very poorly set up, so you can't really, you can only see like the streaks of it all that, but it's for the most part in two beams. Now this one is, I actually think I cracked the side of it too. It is very, very tiny. It's not actually all that functional for me. This one seems to be my, my best bet. Oh. I have to turn it. Ah, bloody hell. to a certain angle. Now this one functions differently. Uh, the cube one is actually two prisms stuck together. This one, if I turn it the other way, functions by being basically a, a one-way mirror. Um, so it's half silvered and lets half light through and half it not, or, or it lets half it through and reflects the other half with very little absorption. My cat really wants in because she knows I'm playing with using the laser. Now this one, uh, you can see that it's lasering out pretty good on uh, each side. Uh, only this one, is, it's a very thin splitter, so it's really hard to get the laser to actually like focus through it properly. But it, it does work, it's just very... It's not the best. Um, it's, it's, it's for a much narrower laser, actually. Now, the reason why these are applicable, as, as I mentioned before, I'm making a, a, Michelson, inter, a Michelson interferometer, which was uh, invented by Albert Michelson, yes, in 1887, or at least it was used by Albert Michelson and Edward Morley uh, during the um, Michelson-Morley experiments in 1887, where they were trying to detect the aether that, that the Earth traveled through that uh, doesn't actually exist, but you never know. Battery's getting low. Now I'm gonna need a, uh... now actually, you can actually use, in my case here, just a normal glass slide, as long as it's clean. And you can get the same kind of effect with it. Oh, this laser is so awful. However, the effect is a little more muted because it absorbs and doesn't reflect a whole lot, and it's terrible. So, 
Uh, I'll probably use a glass slide or I'll try to get one of these to work for my actual interferometer for the testing phase. But for the actual, uh, the rig itself, I'm going to be needing a, an actual larger uh, beam splitter for it. Uh, which they're not, well, they can be expensive, it all depends. They can range anywhere from like $30 to 1000 depending on what kind of quality you're looking for. And uh, honestly, all I really need is like, this laser is terrible. All I need is like a $3 one, really. Just like, like just so this, this one's big enough for like the laser beam that I'm using to go through it. I'm actually going to be using a green laser for my interferometer uh, because it's just generally better. But uh, these are still quite nifty because although although they're very tiny, they function exactly the way the larger ones do. My cat really wants in. Incidentally, she has to learn that life isn't always fair. And I also have a lens here which I'm going to use um, for the outgoing aperture of it to, ah, come on, to kind of like increase the size of the, uh, of the outgoing thing which will make it, well, it'll make the projection wider so you can see the, the uh, distortions better. Anyways, that's all I wanted to do was kind of a quick little play around with uh, beam splitters because they're a lot of fun. This is also a little lens, it's not really important. So uh, yeah. When I actually get the actual interferometer all set up, I'll uh, do another video of that. And hopefully I can get a larger beam splitter for it, otherwise I'll have to use a glass slide, which it'll work, but it's not as precise and that just sucks. So uh, if you want to help out, you can always donate to my uh, crowdfunding campaign, link that in the description. That would really help out. Uh, absolutely no one's donated at all ever, and I doubt anyone ever will, so <laughs> it's more just there for show, I doubt it'll actually work because uh, I haven't done anything worthy of um, donations. But eh, whatever. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll probably do another video later. Um, I have an idea to talk about uh, like blocking alpha or like um, electrons and stuff with aluminum because uh, people seem to think the radiation belts are impenetrable, but they're not, and I can prove that with aluminum foil. So uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and yeah.